So I think that uh, this is what one can say of Arafat. As a whole, my impression of the man, I, I never came to negotiate with Arafat from a sense that I'm talking to a bloodthirsty enemy, which some of my colleagues uh, uh, felt. I came to this man from a position of respect. And uh, to me, he was an intriguing figure, very intriguing. I'm not sure I understand him or I understood him fully. And uh, the whole process was, for me, a process of discovery of a man very complex, very complicated. Um, sometimes I think that uh, to write a biography of Arafat, you would need a Talmudic uh, scholar. I mean, uh, you had always to interpret what he meant but what he by what he said. Uh, you know, um, I think it was uh, Lloyd George who said of uh, De Valera, the Irish uh, leader, that negotiating with De Valera is like picking up uh, mercury with a fork. So more or less, this is Arafat. I mean, it was extremely difficult to, to come with something tangible. He would never uh, close a door. He would never lock a door. He will always leave options open. He will never commit himself fully and irreversibly. Uh, his language was uh, always ambiguous. It was clear to me that he wanted an agreement. It was never clear to me what were the conditions for, for such an agreement. And therefore, you always had the sense that Arafat was drawing you into into a black hole where there was no wall where you stopped negotiating. If I were a Palestinian, I say it many times, I would not have accepted the deal, whatever the deal, this deal might have been, because as I said before, there were different interpretations of what was uh, uh, put on the table in Camp David. But I, I admit that that was not sufficient for the Palestinians, that did not meet the minimal requirements of the Palestinians for a for a deal with Israel. I thought different when it came to the Clinton peace parameters a few months later. There I thought that the Palestinians committed a historic mistake. And I'm not alone. Uh, others in the Palestinian camp thought the same. And, and uh, Bandar bin Sultan as well, uh, in a famous interview in the New Yorker, thought that uh, the rejection of the Clinton peace parameters by Arafat uh, was, uh, was a capital crime against uh, the, the Arab nation or the Palestinian people, as he said. Well, I think that, uh, frankly, uh, as far as I can know, I, I mean, I, I was not privy to any orchestrated campaign. Uh, but what I can say is that uh, Clinton uh, was much more uh, sensitive and sensible to the to the worries of Barak than to the political constraints of Arafat. And therefore, uh, once the summit ended, the focus of the, of the American administration was how to save Barak from the political price he's going to pay in Israel for the failure of the summit. The Israelis, even today, even today, in my view, would accept almost every deal that a legitimate government would, 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 would sign. But they will, and they will not punish politically the, pri the prime minister. They will punish the prime minister if they know of the concessions that he made and yet did not reach a deal. This is like, this is like being a sucker. And, this is, and that was the problem of uh, of uh, Barak in the wake of the, of the Camp David summit. That people in Israel would know that he negotiated Jerusalem, he was ready to divide the, to the old city, he was considering all kinds of formulas on uh, sovereignty in Temple Mount for the Palestinians, and yet he did not reach an agreement. So he's a sucker. Who, who needs such a leader? I mean, this is where the Clinton thought he needs to. Uh, um, 
to try and ease uh, Barak's way into Israeli public opinion. And that is the campaign, as it were. Uh, because then they say that Arafat was to blame and, uh, and the rest of it. Uh, there were even talks between Israel and, uh, and, uh, and the American administration, I think that uh, they were non-starters, where uh, Barak uh, wanted, for example, uh, the, uh, that the, the American em embassy would move to Jerusalem, or, or, or you know, uh, too much for that particular moment in the, in the relations, and especially uh, uh, entirely irrelevant to the peace process uh, if the Americans went to, uh, wanted to get back into the game. I mean, that was obviously not uh, something they could do. But that was, again, that was the focus. Arafat is a dictatorship. He doesn't have any problem with public opinion. And they were not too wrong, really. I mean, he came back to Palestine as a hero. I stood, I show steadfastness uh, in front of two uh, allies, Israel and, uh, and, uh, and America, and there was no sellout of Palestinian interest. So he came back to a, to a euphoric, almost euphoric audience. So uh, the, the understanding of the Americans was not too wrong, really, when they say that the political problems of Barak are different than those of uh, of uh, Arafat. I thought that he was ill uh, because he had some illness. Uh, there were all kinds of legends about uh, his health and uh, I never, th I could not, uh, it never crossed my mind that Israel would have anything to do with his death. Uh, among other reasons because I thought that the very existence of Arafat was politically um, uh, an asset for Sharon. He could always say, look, uh, am I going to negotiate with this extremist, with this radical uh, leader? Uh, because if Arafat passes away, he will have to negotiate with Abu Mazen, people that he cannot easily dismiss as uh, uh, unworthy as interlocutors. This is why I it could not occur to me that uh, there is an interest uh, uh, in Israel uh, of uh, uh, seeing Arafat uh, pass away. Uh, <laughs> you are putting me in a position to explain the, the logic uh, of which I'm not, I've not been privy to uh, of this kind of operations of Shabak, etc. Uh, but the, the, the way I understood it is that even Yassin, uh, first, to begin with, I, I think that all these targeted killings did not change a yota in this process. It's, it's the, that's the, to me, that's the bottom line. The, the, uh, the Palestinians continue to ask the same, the same uh, requirements that they wanted always for, for, for a peace deal. And uh, it, it helped in nothing, practically. And if they decided uh, to stop uh, suicide terrorism, it was not because of targeted killings, because it did not do anything well, good, to the, to the Palestinian cause. And today, they are in a different strategy, not because Israel got rid of uh, Sheikh Yassin or anybody else. Um, but again, in my interpretation of things, Sheikh Yassin was the leader of a movement that was at the time uh, producing havoc in, uh, among Israelis, where the thousand Israelis killed, uh, no, a thousand was it, or uh, there were um, th throughout the Second Intifada. And therefore, you were, uh, you were getting rid of, of a leader that was sending directly or indirectly or inspiring people or giving legitimacy to this mass uh, campaign of suicide terrorism. So that, that was the way that would, one could understand it. But Arafat was somebody that was negotiating with you. He was negotiating. He was the one that if you give a, 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 a sober interpretation of his role in the, uh, throughout the last 20 years, you would see that he was the man that, with whom you need to have a kind of, of peace deal. Otherwise, there's not going to be any kind of deal. 
So uh, I, I draw a line between uh, what Israeli, uh, what Israel, the way Israel fought leaders of Hamas during the Second Intifada, and uh, and, uh, and the person of Arafat. But all this does not uh, necessarily lead to a physical uh, uh, assassination. Um, they were trying to uh, diminish his political clout, his political influence. And uh, I, I saw it also as a way, uh, frankly, uh, again, uh, to me it's, uh, it remains to be uh, to be proved that, that Israel uh, that Israel got rid physically of Arafat, um, I I saw this campaign to appoint a prime minister, etc., as part of the reforms that Israel and others were seeing as a prerequisite for a viable peace process. And uh, and, and frankly, uh, I always saw that there this was one. Uh, one uh, shortcoming of the Palestinian national movement. And this is where Zionism had the upper hand. Uh, you see, when Israel declared the state in 1948, a state for all practical purposes existed already. Wh and and, and uh, this is what uh, Salam Fayyad understands today. And this is why institution building and state building is a prerequisite to state creation or to the to state declaration. This is how I saw it. I didn't see it as a way that uh, 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 was natural conclusion is that if it doesn't work, we'll get rid of him physically. I, I simply didn't see that that way.